Wanting to belong is a basic human need, because belonging was originally a necessary strategy to survive. In a world filled with uncertain physical dangers, being cast out of the tribe was a death sentence. We could not survive on our own. We needed a family, a community, a tribe, and we needed to belong. So we adapted to find our role, our personal significance, and be accepted by the tribe. My name is Vicky Davison, and this is my Oxford talk. When I was a little girl, I had a speech impediment. It was a really bad lisp. I spoke like this. At home, it was fine. My pet dog didn't care. My cat didn't listen. And my goldfish couldn't hear me. When I was climbing trees or chasing butterflies, the trees didn't mind that I spoke funny nor did the butterflies. But on my first day at school, when I opened my mouth and spoke, one boy pointed at me, mimicked my lisp, and everyone laughed at me. I will never forget that day. I have never felt so small and worthless. I desperately wished that the ground would swallow me up. I felt utterly rejected and alone. On that day, age five, I developed a survival strategy to avoid that ever happening again. My strategy? I stopped talking. Oh yes, I smiled a lot, I laughed and I joined in but I didn't talk much. And when I had to talk, I avoided words with an S or I swapped sounds saying yek instead of yes. My coping strategy to adapt, hide my true self and create a mask worked. No one laughed at me again. I had found my role. I was one of the tribe. I belonged. When I was 15, a speech therapist saw me. She gave me a cocktail stick, told me to stick it between my front teeth like this, and practice saying, s -s -s. and within two months, my world changed. I could say, sorry, yes, please. I could speak like everybody else. I had overcome my lisp and could start communicating with the world. But for a long time, I was too terrified to open my mouth. She had fixed the physical problem, but it took years before I took part in conversations easily. And even then, words often got lost or mixed up on the way from my brain to my mouth. I still have that fear of speaking. The racing heart, the knot in the stomach, the dread and fear. Yet here I am today giving this talk, my Oxford talk. Because even though I was shaking before I came out here and my heart is racing, I truly understand the power of communication and am passionate about the impact our need to belong has on everything we do and how we are limiting ourselves just to be accepted. This primordial need to belong is fueled by two driving forces. One, the fear of disapproval and rejection. And two, the need for acceptance and approval. Now, let me ask you a question. How many times a day do you make a decision? It may be simple. For example, what should I wear today? Should I call a friend or not? Should I cycle to work or take the bus? 
What should I have for lunch? Or it may be complex. For example, should I quit my job? Should I leave my partner? Should I complain about my boss? Should I ask for a pay rise? What thoughts go through your head when you make these decisions? How many of your decisions are based on avoiding failure or criticism, not wanting to let people down or disappoint them, the fear of being laughed at, missing out or making a fool of ourselves? And how many of your decisions are based on obtaining praise and recognition, gaining approval, respect, reward and gratitude from others? Such is our desire and constant search for approval, love, praise, respect, significance, friendship, recognition. And such is our fear of disapproval, rejection, criticism, judgment, of being laughed at, punished, letting others down or being left out that we agree to things we don't like. We put up with a job which is unfulfilling. We stay in a relationship which is lacking. We do things we don't want to do just to keep others happy, be seen as successful, keep the peace or meet expectations. Yet we know that something's not right, something's missing. Why can't I just be me? You know that feeling? But we don't know what to do. We feel stuck and become overwhelmed, confused, lost. So we ignore the feeling, we distract ourselves, we keep ourselves busy and life goes on. Perhaps we buy a new dress to make us feel better or a new car to show how successful we are. Perhaps we enroll on a course to find our purpose. Or we go on another holiday to show how well-traveled we are. And we post our success and happy life on social media to gain approval, admiration and respect. Social media opens whole new possibilities for how we show up in the world. The power of tribalism in this digital world influences how we present ourselves and how we perceive others. Words are powerful, and I will come back to language later, but words affect how we think and thinking affects how we behave. In social media, the vocabulary used is the language of tribalism and creates the feeling of belonging or not. Friends, likes, followers, following, influencers, joining groups, invitations, accepting people. We rate our value by how many friends we have, how many likes we get, how many followers we have. We follow others who we want to be like or who we admire. But there is also the downside, the modern day equivalent of being rejected, being outcast by the tribe. We fear disapproval, judgment, criticism, being seen as a failure. We dread being laughed at, missing out or disappointing people and we see the disastrous consequences such rejection brings. Hate mail, mobbing, trolling, bullying, lies can all lead to anxiety, mental illness, depression, and sometimes even suicide. The fear of rejection and the need to belong are so strong and deep within us we become the person who fits in, who adapts to the norms and conditions of the society we live in to gain approval, significance and acceptance. 
It impacts every action we take and every decision we make. But the acceptance it brings is for who we have become, not for who we truly are. Now let me pose a question. When you look back at your life, do you want to smile and say, yes, I lived a fulfilling, rewarding life, true to me? Or do you want to shake your head and say, I wish I'd lived differently? And so we have a choice, a decision, and possibly some action to take. We can continue living as we are, or we can start becoming our true self. Undoing the chains we have set upon ourselves, unlocking the desires and dreams we have pushed away, releasing the fear of disapproval and rejection, and showing our true self is a daunting, sometimes terrifying thought. Yet what is so scary about being you? Why are you holding yourself back? What are you afraid will happen if you just show up as you? And what could happen? How could you feel? How far could you go if you start showing up as you? The tribe we are born into, the family society we grew up in, and who set the stage for our development is what forms us into who we become. But to live a complete, full life, we need to re-establish who we truly are. And only then can we find our true tribe, the tribe which accepts and values us as we are, for who we are, for just being ourselves. Today I want to share with you the three most important lessons I have learned so far on my journey. The first is that belonging starts within. When we accept and approve of ourselves, when we believe in ourselves and learn to love ourselves as we are, we no longer need to seek approval and acceptance from others. And when we start being just me and showing up as our authentic self, that is when we find our true tribe, that group of people who believe in us, who encourage and motivate us, who value and respect us, and who love us unconditionally as we are. And when we feel genuinely loved, valued, respected and approved by people we truly love, value and respect, then we can become who we are meant to be and start to really live. The second is to be aware of the words we use. Language is full of finite opposites. Win, lose, good, bad, success, failure. We always desire the outcome which will bring approval and acceptance. And we avoid the outcome which may bring rejection or criticism. So the words we use influence the actions we take and decisions we make. Because with finite opposites, if we are not one, we are the other. If we do not win, we lose. If we do not succeed, we fail. If we're not good at something, we're bad at it. By changing words, we reframe the potential outcome and this changes everything. When we remove the word failure as a possible outcome, and choose the words progression and growth, 
then we remove the fear because there is only one outcome, the outcome of progress, which is positive, good and worthy. The third is that becoming you is an incredible ongoing journey, offering you endless possibilities to grow and develop, to improve and learn, to meet people and connect deeply. It is an adventure full of excitement, wonder and opportunities. And it is up to you where it goes. Now that little girl who stopped talking to fit in has now found her voice, stepped out from her shadow and become her authentic self. And she wants to inspire you with her story and empower you to do the same. So remember, one, belonging starts within. Accept, approve and love yourself as you are. Two, choose your words and reframe failure. There is only growth and progression. Three, becoming you is a never ending journey of opportunity and adventure. So allow the precious person you are to flourish and thrive. Let the wonderful person deep down be seen and loved. Become the amazing person you know you truly can be. Believe in yourself and know you are enough.